Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Cole! We did it, everybody! Make the noise! <laughs> Guys, keep that energy going. More time for Zero and Kyle, everybody. There you go. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to be taking a seat for most of this. <laughs> I can barely stand right now. <laughs> Hi! Hi! <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for being here tonight. This is good. Just a nice little intimate crowd. Some storytelling, some dick jokes. You guys ready for that? Oh, I'm happy to be here tonight. Let's just get into this shit. Pandemic? Yeah? We over it? We're done? Yeah? Anybody hook up with somebody during the pandemic? Anybody new relationships? Jesus Christ. <laughs> right up front. I know where I'm going all night. <laughs> I've been aggressively single the past couple months. Um, well, I look like this, and God's turned up the temperature in California, so it's not really... <laughs> It's not really so much me as it's not a lot of people have plastic sheets ready to go if you're going to fuck me. So it's, it's a lot of sweat if you know what I'm talking about. It's a slip and slide when I'm done with your bed. It is just super. <laughs> Tried to date after the pandemic. I just... The last girl I went on a date with, she told me she doesn't need birth control anymore because she's vaccinated. Like, what? <laughs> I'm just like, all right, I guess, I guess we're just going to keep this dick inside until this settles down. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. I um, try again, and it, it's funny because I, I am single, and I hang out with, uh, it's just fun. Like, to me, I, it's, this year, it's like we're doing football again. We're going to hang out with friends, and it sucks because all the single people left standing, like, all my married friends are just trying to hook me up with their single friends. Like, I just went over to a buddy's game recently. Uh, I'll, I'll get by my buddy's place. And he's, oh, by the way, I just want to let you guys know, this is, we're doing one taping tonight. So if I fuck up, I'm just going to go take two. <laughs> All right? And you guys have to laugh harder at the shit you just heard. All right? All right? Take two, Kyle. Oh, <laughs> Oh, God. I was watching a game at my buddy's house, and his wife gets in front of the TV. And you can tell this is like almost like a rehearsed speech because she's even doing, like, the motion. She's like, time out. <laughs> Matt, you got to meet my single friend, Becky. I'm like, tell me about Becky. She's like, she's super sweet. She's cute. She's got, like, really big boobs. And I was karaoke. I'm like, hold on a second. Big boobs karaoke. Just tell me she's fat. I know what's going on. I'm like... <laughs> How are you trying to sell me to her? Like, all right, he's kind of silly. <gasps> it is going to keep you warm in the winter. <laughs> Ridiculous. Like, that's the only thing I have is warmth. That's all I bring to the relationship. I <laughs> uh, love it. And here's the thing, though. Like, I, I'll do it. I'll go. I'll beat your friends. We'll go hang out. And I did. I met, I met Becky. She was a beautiful big girl. And here's the thing. Like, I love a curvy woman. God, I love curves. I love hips. I like thighs, juicy booties, American thighs. And I know it's like douchey to scream that into a microphone. <laughs> I'm not bragging. All right? I get laid like corporations pay taxes. <laughs> like, like, like quarterly at best if you've been watching the news at all lately. Like that's that's all that's happened. And so like I'll beat your friends. But here's the thing, even for me, I realize like I'm a big dude. And I love healthy women, but first, sometimes for me, even times, like, women might be a little too big for me. And I'm not fat shaming. I'm not body shaming. I don't care what your size is. Women, you deserve romance in your life. Here's the thing. I'm a realist. I'm a big boy. You're a big girl. Sure, you're going to let me face fuck you for a while before we go doggy style. <laughs> but at some point, you're going to roll over and make eye contact. And then that's... Well, we're going to run into a problem, right? Because now we have, like, a logistics issue to figure out here. Like, I'm not good at math, and i got to solve, solve for, like, a double belly-to-boner ratio. Fit and folds, finding new angles. And I failed geometry the first time. So don't expect me to solve this Pythagorean puss-puss in front of me. Like, I... <laughs> uh, I'm having fun. I, uh... <laughs> It's weird because later in my life, I find that I date interracially. And that's the quiet I've come to know in Orange County when you say that. <laughs> and it's like, I, 
Okay, I don't look like a progressive dude. Like, I can't, my look is a little upsetting. So, like, one person was like, oh, maybe we're going to learn about culture. And the rest of the room was like, well, he's about to bitch you a hate crime. Here it comes. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> eh, this joke is a little column A, a little column B. Let's be honest. <laughs> I, uh, I used to say, like, dating narration was cool until I dated an international person. And this just might be my fat lens at everything. But once you date somebody that's not an American, you realize how much you really just have in common. Like, it doesn't matter really the culture you come from. Like, to me, really, it's, it's to me, it's like three things I broke down. Like, if you're really fighting over culture, it's the kind of cheese you grew up with in your mac and cheese. <laughs> Like three ingredients in a potato salad and like four entrees at a holiday party. That's all we're fighting about when it comes between the races. I, I dated an Israeli girl not that long ago. Ooh, they are very intense people. <laughs> and she was not pro-American, man. Actually, someone the other day asked me if her name was Esther, Rachel, or Sarah. I didn't know that was a stereotype. Like her name was Rachel. Her mother's name is Sarah, and her grandmother's name is Esther. So she got all of them. Like, wow, that's. <laughs> she was super Jewish, super Jewish. I wanted to introduce her to my my Jewish friend Jacob, and she was found out he was from Eastern Eastern European descent. She goes, No, I, no, I will not meet them. <laughs> no, he is a defect. He has a gypsy blood. It is. And I'm like, holy shit, like, I know we're like on a patio having appetizers at Huntington Beach. I give off the fat guy from American History X vibe. But like, maybe, maybe we keep this to ourselves. I see a lot of people nodding and this is how a rally gets started out here. That's ridiculous. Uh, Learn some things from her though. I didn't realize this. If you're a, 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 a native born uh, Israeli, you have to join the Israeli army. She was very proud of that. She re-signed, she did eight years in the Israeli army and she became a, uh, a black belt in Krav Maga. If you guys are not familiar, Krav Maga translated means angry hand jobs. <laughs> angry, angry hand jobs. She would literally grab my dick and just <laughs> try to turn it into a bullet. Just, just the angriest stuff. No spit, no lube. <laughs> Just trying to recircumcise the shit out of it. What do I? One of my favorite things she would do in the bedroom is she'd get really, like, really into it. She was a huge dirty talker, but then she'd get like really like self-conscious about it. One time she's like, that's what I do. Fuck my pussy, I do not want to walk tomorrow. <laughs> and then she's like, but uh, you can be gentle too. <laughs> I used to call that her Anne Frank pillow talk, but that joke is for me. That joke's for me. <laughs> uh, she, <laughs> she only comes to the United States like every four months to like sell jewelry, and then she goes back and parties in Tel Aviv and shit. She really is not an American. So I've caught her a couple of times on her while she's been out here. Uh, the one time though, she, she came over crest. Uh, I was watching her go to bed and she was like messaging somebody. I'm like, oh baby, who are you talking to? She goes, yes, I, uh, I messaged a friend of mine. He had passed away. I messaged him every night. I'm like, that's really sweet. She goes, yes, I've been doing this for eight years. I'm like, eight years. Maybe it's time you get a journal. And I didn't realize journal translate differently from Israeli. So I just told a Jewish girl she needed to get a diary. So it started quite the fight. <laughs> You do not respect my grieving process. And I had to find, like, who, how are you messaging? And it turned out every night she would send a message on Facebook. And the reason she would send it there is every time you show a message, it shows when it's been seen. And she likes to think that was her friend up in heaven looking down, reading her messages. And I'm like, you're still on birth control, right? <laughs> what? Why am I asking? Oh, no, goddamn reason. You're obviously too dumb for calm. Like, this is a ridiculous situation. Like, I don't want to, like, I don't like to tell her, like, like, it's not the millennial version of a Ouija board. We're not contacting the afterlife for Facebook. At best, it's a family member or friend going, yes, yes, she sent another message. I don't know who this bitch is. I don't know. <laughs> Change the profile picture to the gravestone. She will get the hint. <laughs> and here's the thing. I, if you believe in an afterlife, that's fine. I, I, you believe in whatever you want. But if you believe you can get to heaven 
And when you get to heaven, you can clock in on Facebook and contact others. <laughs> you better take a look around because I'm pretty sure you just went to hell. Like, there's no way. There's no way you're in heaven doing Twitter. 140 characters for Jesus. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not working. Uh, uh, I'll try this one. Let's see if my foot's working. Her biggest thing she wanted to do <laughs> I, uh, I recently became an owner of a new Sonata. <laughs> it's not worth brag rights. But she's always wanted to hook up in like a new American car. That was always her thing. She wanted to have sex. And I'm just going to say this. Who in here is still having sex in cars? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> really? What, what, you? Your car? That little, what, the bed of the truck? What are you doing here? <laughs> You got like a windowless van I don't know about? You were pretty enthralled there. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you're having sex under the age of, over the age of 30, then you're fucked up. Then nobody's fucked up. So they're cars anymore. Like, I pay rent. I paid way too much for air conditioning this summer. Like, we are fucking in this bed. I have a sleep number. Like, that's, like, that's, that's what we're doing. But she wants it. It's always been her fantasy. So she convinces me. And I do this is going to be a bad idea, but we get in the backseat of the car. And here's the thing. A Sonata is listed as a full-size sedan. Full-size sedan. <laughs> but you'll be lucky to get two refugees from the Sudan in that backseat, <laughs> let alone my American ass. And we're back there rolling around trying to find the right position. And it's not working. It's getting heated up. The windows are starting to get just coated was sad, fat failure. Just <laughs> rolling down the window, sticking your head out, trying to get air. Like my shirt's already stuck to the window. If you're walking by, you're like, Jesus Christ, did the rear airbag go off? What the fuck is wrong with that car? <laughs> At some point, she's like, fine, let's reset. So what she does is we both jump out of the car. She jumps back in on her knees where she's face down, ass up. And that's the convenience factor. I get it. But I realized in order for me to keep this going, I still have to be outside of the car. <laughs> and now what I'd have to do is I'd have to plant my foot on the ledge like an obese Captain Morgan, just happy to be there. <laughs> and now what I gotta do is I gotta try to push forward the find the angle that she gave me, and I'm coming and look a, like a rookie fighter pilot. <laughs> doing his first air refueling. I'm smacking thigh, I'm in ass. I'm not even finding where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> and then I make, I make a mistake. I asked her to arch her back, which I didn't realize is a pro level request. <laughs> like you only see that work in porno. Because <laughs> like, instead what she does is she squats down on her haunches she balloons her arms forward like she's in a four-point stance, ready to stack the quarterback. <laughs> a grin ear to ear looking back at me like, is this right? I'm like, sure, that's perfect. Win one for the Gipper, the old college try. <laughs> at this point, what I want to do is lick my hands, get behind her and yell Omaha to the back of her pussy. Like that's... <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm standing there and I've got the one leg planted, I'm holding on. This leg's starting to shake because there's so much, it's so much pressure. This is the kind of pressure that turns dinosaurs into fossil fuel. I'm shaky leg in it. My pants are to my ankles. I can only stagger step forward as I'm pushing into the night to find anything warm at this point. And then like a rainbow in the dark. I connect, and it's incredible. It's amazing. It's like three minutes of nostalgia. It's all the best parts of high school all over again. Just hold it on. Keep it with her. But as she's going, she's starting to look up over the window, and that's where she gets a little concerned. She goes, oh, my God, there, are there people out there watching us? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah, there's definitely a couple out here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Your criteria was a parking lot with no lights, not next to a school. This is Home Depot, baby. We're at Home Depot. There's definitely some day laborers that want to take this job away from me. We should hurry up pretty quick here. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are great so far. You guys having fun? <laughs> but that 
pissed me off. Because <laughs> I thought I was, I thought, like, literally, I'm 40 years old. Like, I shouldn't have to do this shit anymore. Like, I shouldn't be so wound up, so horny to get laid. Like, I'm still willing to do this shit. I just figured at this point in my life, like, my libido would stop dropping down. I start talking to guys in their 50s and 60s, and they go, asshole, you're always going to be that horny. <laughs> <laughs> they say the light at the end of the tunnel, though, is like, over time, that threshold, what you're willing to do to get laid, that's what starts to diminish <laughs> over those years. And... <laughs> I didn't think it was true. I used to do anything to get laid. I used to do, <laughs> I used to be on this revolutionary dating app called AOL Instant Messenger. <laughs> Aim for the cool kids. Remember those ridiculous <laughs> handles like Big Papa 69, <laughs> Space Kitten 22. My handle sucked. I was Slaw 76. <laughs> I had lived in the South for a while. My last name is Cole. You figured out how I came up with slog is them thinkers down there, <laughs> right? And 76 was my old varsity number, slog 76. And I was just on like a Thursday night at like 10 o'clock just trying to talk to anybody that was willing to touch my dick at the time. <laughs> and I started talking to this girl. She's like, you seem super cool. You know what would be cool? If you brought beer over to my house, let's party tonight. I'm like, let's do it, right? I, I, uh, I go online. And this is back before we even had GPS. So I had to use something called MapQuest, if you guys remember that. <laughs> yeah. And I was so horned up. I was so ready to get it up there. I didn't want to wait the 45 minutes for that dot matrix parent to come online. So I jotted her address down by hand. I got in my car. I took off. And she goes, it's only like a 10-minute ride. And 30 minutes into that 10-minute ride, I'm like, I don't think that's quite what's going on here. Uh, she lived all the way down in San Diego. <laughs> yeah. So an hour and a half later, I get down to there, and here's my problem is I had written the freeway, the exit, and her address, but I forgot to write down all the roads on how to get to that address. So when I got to San Diego, it took me like 30 minutes to find a gas station that let me use their Thomas guide. I buy half the blank stairs edge from me right now. It took me 30 minutes to explain what a Thomas guide used to be. We used to be on a grid system, so it was like playing wacky bingo for pussy that night. Page 72, grid C3, there she is! I get my case of beer, I walk up to this little bungalow house, none of the lights are on. I knock on the door, none of the lights come on. I'm like, well, I'm already here. So I get the story, I ring the doorbell. Lights come on, and there's some yelling, and I hear some stomping towards the door. The door blasts open, it's her mother in a nightgown. Clearly not wearing a bra, so you know she's pissed off. <laughs> Looking at me, and she starts screaming at me. Turns out I was the fourth guy to show up to her house that night. <laughs> this girl had lied. She was only 17 years old and had been inviting strangers over all night long. As her mother starts explaining this to me, I start tucking that case of beer behind my back, and I got the hell out of here. Because any comedian will tell you, we want to end up on TV as soon as possible, but I don't think to catch a predator is where I want my debut to be. <laughs> Ridiculous shit to get laid. Actually, I do have a good story. I actually beat the power of pussy recently. It did not compel me. Uh, <laughs> this girl I had kind of been seeing for a while, she texted me, Tuesday, 8 o'clock at night, Tuesday. Just a sweet little text. Hey, what are you doing? I want to come over. Let's have some fun tonight. Let's have some fun tonight. That's a sure thing. She wants to come over. She wants to hook up. And I'm looking at that text going, it's already 8 p.m. Like this. <laughs> Like, there's a whole new Game of Thrones to catch up on. She's going to want to spend the night. <laughs> so I did it. I told her I was busy. <laughs> I just, I wish there was a word for men other than libido. And I thought about it recently, and I've come up with decadence. Everybody knows decadence, right? Decadence is your infatuation with pleasure through materialistic means, whether it's wealth or food or anything like that. Decadence is just my infatuation with getting someone to try to touch my dick. That's all it is. <laughs> touch it! Touch my dick! <laughs> Decadence. <laughs> um, this next story, it's... Never told it to people before. Like, real people. Like, I've told it to comedians don't count. They're fucking dead on the inside. <laughs> the reason the story came about is I love shrooms. <laughs> and I love telling stories on shrooms. <laughs> 
And uh, I was sitting with some comedians and they like said, Matt, what's really the craziest thing you ever did to try to get laid? And this happened <sighs> early 2000s. You guys got to come back with me on this. I don't think you guys remember what I'm talking about. Do you guys remember when Blockbuster was still good? <laughs> Do you guys remember a day before Amazon delivered everywhere? Do you guys remember when you got pissed if a friend, if you weren't in their top eight of MySpace? No. You don't remember those days? That's where I'm taking you back to. This is back when we had cell phones, but you couldn't take pictures on them yet. <laughs> I had broken up with a girl I had dated for a couple of years, and it had been about a year since I've seen her, and she hit me up. You know how that, that works? It's always like that timing. Like, I don't know who's stalking who, but it's like, oh, there's like a break in like dating. So like you meet in like a with an ex. And uh, we met up at Chili's Happy Hour. That used to be our place. Four dollar hefts and 25 cent wings. Because I am. I know how to treat a lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I had not seen this girl in a year. When she came strolling up, she was a whole new side behold. She had like a brand new personality and just... <laughs> Just the whole thing. When we dated, she was adorable. She was cute. She'd always wear like jeans and have like a cute t-shirt on. Her hair was always like in a ponytail. But now she had just enhanced herself. She was wearing like a halter top and a skirt and it just reeked of sexuality. And I was so happy that she was here <laughs> having drinks, talking. Things kind of turned sexual, talking about things. She had it hooked up since getting the new, the new tit job. And that's when I... <laughs> That's all I had to hear. <laughs> I don't know if you, if you want to call it just male privilege or um, my manifest destiny. <laughs> but I was going to come on those titties. <laughs> I wasn't going to christen those bad boys. Like I had, I'm not really some, but I'm like, I'm not a guy that has... I'll never, God, I can't forget that. <laughs> just the whole time her mouth moves and I'm like, there is my bullseye. Just looking at it. She was talking about some sex toy that she wanted to get. And this is, again, we were still early 20s. We we're living at home. You didn't have anything delivered at home like you do now. There wasn't really discreet packaging back in the day. And if you did get discreet packaging, there's a good chance your parents are going to open it regardless. <laughs> She wanted some sort of new, I don't know what girls get, butterfly, dolphin, rabbit. rabbit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what fucking animals you're fucking, but it's, it's one of those. <laughs> I don't know with all the beads and the whistles and the lights. <laughs> I need to see inside to come. What? <laughs> so that's what she did. And here's the thing. She knew where she could get one locally, but she didn't want it in pink because pink are for princesses. She wanted it in purple because purple's for royalty. Wow. Her words, not mine. <laughs> so we had a quest that day. My quest was to come on those titties, and her quest was to find this toy. And off we set into the Inland Empire. Yeah. The dirty, dirty <laughs> Inland Empire. And we arrived upon this vestige. <laughs> I'll, I'll never forget the tagline thousands of beautiful women and three ugly ones <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about it's right in the heart of hookerdom right there off of May, what is it Mission and Holt a place that I think has been closed down twice since this has happened a place called Deja Vu <laughs> half strip club half sex shop and we showed up to this place right as the sun was setting I, I don't know if that means anything as we're walking in, we see the door to the sex shop where she wants to go. And I get this big hand on my chest and I see this giant wall of a man. He goes, it's $10 to get in. I'm like, no, we don't. We don't want to go see the strippers. We want to go to your little fuck stop, fuck shop upstairs, sir. $10 to get in. I'm like, oh, all right. And I go to pull out my wallet. But before I could pull out my wallet, I notice his face lights up and I look over and she's already just dropped her shirt. Like the price of a mission is titties and we get nan, right? Like she just paid the boatman, like Dante's Inferno. And now I gotta ascend these stairs to God knows what layer of hell we're going to. We're walking up these stairs. It's on the third floor, so it's quite the height to get up there. And we get in there, and I'm just thinking, like, this is gonna be some dirty little dungeon, and I'm wrong. We open those doors, 
and it's immaculate. It's sterile. It's clean. There's like a Costco aisle of dildos on the wall, and it's just <laughs> everything you can hope for. We get in this place, and we're looking around, and we really don't know what we're looking for. And after about five minutes, I noticed the cashier's coming over. And at first, I couldn't figure out what was going on because it, it looked like she might have had a pincushion in her face. No, she just had every piercing ever. <laughs> and she came up and she starts explaining to us, like, hi, my name is so. She says, what do you mean? And she explains to her the toy. She's like, oh, my God, I know exactly where it is. And she rushes us over to go find, what was it, the rabbit? The rabbit. The rabbit. <laughs> there was something like that called the rabbit tonight. And we get there, and she's going through, and she goes, they're only pink ones. Do you have any purple ones? She goes, well, I might have some in the back, but i got to climb through boxes. It's kind, of, it's kind of a lot of work. She goes, well, I'll tell you what. You show me your tits, and I'll go back and do it for you. And the word, show me your tits, it just shirt down again. <laughs> and this time it was different. It wasn't just a man glaring. It was a woman openly molesting her tits. I don't know why women get away with that, but she's like talking about, like, in like medical terms, like pinching her nipples, like, oh, are they still sensitive? Do you have feelings just all over? I'm like, Jesus Christ. And that's when I realized we were the only people in this store. There had been some gawkers, and those gawkers are now walking towards us as this girl runs off to find this purple toy for her. She goes to get the toy, and the girl's one with pulls up her shirt, and now there's like random, like, it's almost like porn zombies. <laughs> like, like they're like walking, like, like how I limped out here tonight. It's gonna like slowly moving and looking at things. She comes running back, waving it in there. She's like, I found it, I got it for you. Just yelling across the store. So if you were embarrassed, you are now. She brought it to this thing and she goes, listen, this is uh, the, the, the latest model. She's explaining how it works. She goes, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some fresh batteries. And you could take it to the couple cinema and try it out yourself tonight. Try it out, see if you like it. So she cuts it open, gives batteries, and I don't know what a couple cinema is. There's two neon lights. One says arcade. And I'm like, cool, they got games here. And the other one says couple cinema. We get to the couple cinema. There's a bouncer. We've already been through this, right? Shirt down, we're in for free. <laughs> And this couple cinema is gross, but not really. Like you have, they have like a bunch of like stained, like big beanbag love chairs, <laughs> like these little like like almost like a, like a, like love seats. But you could tell they've been like sprayed off before. <laughs> and in the back corner, there was like two little seats, and that's where she made it to. And we get in the back corner, she figures out how to get the batteries in, and like <laughs> she just gets it lined up, and she goes to get ready to start it up. And I don't know if this thing had a pull start on it or something, <laughs> but she goes to start it up and it's like, brum, da, 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 da. like everybody's looking at her. I'm like, is that on the highest setting? She goes, no, that's low. I've never heard a sex toy that loud in my life. <laughs> she starts really, really unnerving with it. She's looking around. I don't want people watching me. I'm like, well, then maybe put it away. So she doesn't get to use it. She puts all the things in the bag. We go back and the, the girl's like, oh, you didn't get a chance to use it? She goes, no, I didn't want the prying eye. She goes, well, we do have some private arcades you can try it in. And I get, I'm like, cool, I like games. <laughs> you go back there, and there is no bouncer for that room. There are some lurkers, though. Before we got back there, she goes, here, you need these. I'm like, cool, tokens. I guess the way these tokens work is you put them in the door, the door locks, it automatically seals, and then after about a time, the door opens. I have three tokens. I guess they're good for five minutes each. Put in the token, the door seals. It's like an electric lock on it. I turn around. And again, these are like the size of broom closets. This isn't like a standing room only. There's like a seat, a screen. And by the time I turn around, she's already found like the porn she wants to watch. I'm like, okay, I'm into this. <laughs> she gets going. She's playing with the toy. She's having a good time. I start getting into it as well. And then we start kind of going at it and then the way it worked was she had leaned back in the seat and I was able to grab her legs to where I was there it, it was a weird like l-shaped situation like like if I was doing this right I would have used this leg as the clutch <laughs> and like this leg over here to kind of like depending on how fast we we're going like that's the position we were in and I started hearing this beeping noise it was like beep Beep, 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 beep. And I start trying to keep rhythm. Beep, beep, beep. And I realized, oh, the door's about to open. 
So I fish out another coin. I put it in there. I'm like, another five minutes. Let's rock it. And we're going. We're having a good time. And then that's when the beeping noise started again. And this time I went to go pull out my last coin. And as I wanted to put it in the slot, it fell to the ground. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not reaching down there. <laughs> in the dark, I don't know what's slimy. I don't know what's going on. So I'm like, okay, this can't be too bad. I'll just try to hold the door shut as we're doing this. Eventually the beepy noise and it unlocks and the door kind of jars a little bit. And I look hope and there are two dudes looking in at us and both of them are aiming at us. And they're off to the races. And I don't know if, I don't know who was about to win by a nose in this case, but I'm at the point where I'm not gonna stop either. And I figure if she doesn't notice, no harm, no foul. Problem is, as this is going on, she looked back, she saw the one guy, and she started freaking out a little. <laughs> she tried to wave her hand back to stop him. And as she did, that's what I was finishing. So she pushed backwards. I went to go out to finish my manifest destiny. <laughs> but I got stuck in that position where all I was able to do was just literally pull out and just go all over her belly. And as I was doing that, we heard like this wretch from this goblin looking man. He looked like Gollum. And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what I could only call like a homeless Hadouken of come <laughs> shot up over her and landed directly on my pristine tits. <laughs> She's not happy. She's freaking out. She starts cussing them out to the point where it's creating a commotion. I pull myself out and pull my pants up. She's already got her shirt down still. She's got her skirt down, her toy back in the bag. She grieves me by the hand and she takes off. And I'm being drugged out of there like a five-year-old boy lost looking for his mama in a big store. And she literally has come dripping off her, her tits walking through and again you weren't allowed down the same way you came in so she had to drag me through the sex shop down through the, the strip club and i'll never forget the song that was playing at the time this is how we do it <laughs> <laughs> and she drug me all the way to the car so upset she went in, she grabbed one of my favorite, to this day, I, I still don't, I'll never get it back, but she grabbed one of my favorite sweats and started cleaning off. And not only have I never been that turned on before, I looked her in the eyes and go, this is what you had to do to get purple. <laughs> we'll see if that makes it or not. <laughs> oh, guys, injured my foot again. That sucks. No, it's just, here's the thing, eh, who cares? Dude, I'm fat, I'm 40, injuries suck. I don't even tell people how I injure myself anymore. I just start rattling off action movies. Like what happened the other day? Oh, I was uh, at the World Bank and uh, Hans Zimmer showed up and I had to take out some international terrorists barefoot. That was what I did. Oh, what did I do the other day? Well, I was drinking in the Bahamas and I had to help these four Jamaican guys win a bobsled race. I, uh, no. Dude, if, here's the thing. If you see an old person or a fat person and they want to ask themselves are they injured stuff, don't. It's stupid. It's insert dumb random task here, add gravity, and then God said you're too fat for feet. That's what it is. That's what it is. How did I hurt myself originally? Well, I'm still a bro douche in my head, and I'm not going to do two trips of groceries to my apartment. <laughs> So I was going all up and I was wearing flip-flops and that was the end of that. Busting my foot, it sucks. I wish I still had, well, I do still have some fun injury stories, but they're from when you're younger. Like one of my favorite stories to tell is uh, one of my most sexually traumatic adventures ever. And it's because I love thick, beautiful women. It's really what it is. I, um, I love curvy girls. I go where you find the best curvy girls. I'm not gonna lie. You find them bitches at karaoke bars. That's where you gotta go. You like tits, ass, and thighs? That's where they're at, building out their rendition to Black Velvet. <laughs> or whatever that country song is about keying up some poor fucker's truck. You'll fog them out there. <laughs> you know which one it is. They're belting it out. 
And I found her that night. I called her the trifecta. If you're not bored, trifecta means three things. And this is the three things you ever hope for in a curvy girl. Bird of a beautiful face, rocking titties. And I got to find out later that night, like amazing head. Like she knew how to rock more than a microphone. But, she, <laughs> but it was also like, I don't know, gentlemen or ladies, maybe you're the person that does this. Uh, women, sometimes you get a little over aggressive with your, your fellatio. I like to call it exorcism head. <laughs> That's when you got all those demon noises. You're like, blah, 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 blah. you're like, Jesus, like the power of my cock compels you. Like, what is going on? <laughs> Slow it down, it take. Let's relax. She's like, fine, whatever. Lay back. Get undressed. It's my turn. I'm like, yes, ma'am. Let's parlay this in some action. I get on down and she starts waddling up. But I'm like, ooh, someone's not a gymnast. <laughs> She forgot to stick the landing. <laughs> Instead, like a flock of geese, she keeps moving north. Before I know it, I start getting a knee pushing back each one of my arms. And now I'm looking directly at her lady business going, okay, what chapter 50 Shades of Grey is this bullshit from? <laughs> I'm like, I've been here before. This can't get any weirder. Got weirder right away. <laughs> she looks down at me. She goes, that's right, boy. It's time for you to eat my cookie. I'm not one to be outdone. I'm like, well, that's right, bitch. They call me the cookie monster. Cookie, cookie, nom, 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 nom. And I start going to town. And here's a side note, ladies. You find a boy with a belly. That's our first move, only move. So we're cooking it up. But what I didn't realize in that moment was that my chubby cheeks and her chubby thighs <laughs> met at this weird angle that created like this airtight hermetic seal. <laughs> yeah. And after about 15 to 20 seconds, I realized I couldn't breathe. And I didn't bring a reserve tank. It's Muff Dive on 101, I learned now. But I was raised a gentleman, so I gingerly up to her like, listen, I can't breathe. Can you get off me? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Please get off me. I can't breathe. <laughs> All she could hear the moment between her thighs. <laughs> Which she took is a sign of encouragement. <laughs> she thought I was talking dirty. She locked in, grabbed my head, and she started grinding harder. Now that is what they call fight or flight response time. <laughs> All I was able to do though I was pinned back so far is I was just able to rub my face so fast that her fupa dropped from my brow down below my nose. And then I was stuck there looking at two swinging titties with her hand in the air like she was holding on. Like eight seconds like it's a goddamn rodeo. I realized at that point she had me pinned back so far it looked like I was just trying to tap out and smack her ass at the same time. I just saw a documentary recently, but a man that was drowning suffocated. And he says, after the initial panic, this calm starts to wash through your body as you accept your fate. I'm sitting here today sweating my ass off to tell you that's exactly what happens. <laughs> I was pinned back being erotically waterboarded. <laughs> and the only thing I could think at the time was, well, this is it. I'm going out the same way I came in. <laughs> My dad's gonna start to tell his buddies, they'll be proud. But the whole time I'm not doing the magic, she realizes it. She sits up, lifts her leg to see what's going on and I can testify in front of all of you today, I found religion again. <laughs> I saw the light. Literally felt the weight being lifted off my chest. I turned into Samson, heaved my strength. I heaved her off the bed. Sweating like I am now, there's already a wet spot. Obviously, I don't come a lot. I sweat a lot. You guys know that as the cuddle puddle. We've all been there once. 
She starts army crawling back into the matches, looking at me. She goes, what? What was that for? I was like, I couldn't. I couldn't breathe. She goes, well, why didn't you try to say something? <laughs> Bitch, I did all that. That was me screaming for my life. And then she gets angry at me. She goes, well, then you should have tried harder. Try harder. What else am I supposed to do? Start blasting out SOS and Morse code with my tongue? I just hope that your clit knows the difference between a dash and a dot? I hear it, dude. <laughs> I wish that story had a great ending, but I dated her for 10 more months. Dude, you heard the beginning, right? Rocking titties, amazing head. Nobody gives that up for a minute as oxygen deprivation, dude. <laughs> If you're a man in here right now over the age of 35 and you're single, make some noise right now. <laughs> Did you just come in your pants? What was that noise? Dude, I knew there was handicapped parking. Do we have handicapped seating? Dude, if you're 35 and single, you're going to die, son. You got to get you a lady. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. I, I, I get you, dude. I'm, I'm 40. I'm single right now. It's, it's rough. Here's the thing. Like, I have friends, male friends. I will die for you, homie. I will die for you, bro. I'll take a bullet for you. You know what a male friend has never asked me about? My fucking health insurance. <laughs> they don't care if you live or die. That's why I think women are great. Like, uh, uh, right before the pandemic, I hurt my leg really bad. Uh, I needed to go to the doctor. We didn't know if I needed surgery on it. And if you guys remember during the pandemic, um, that was when you couldn't get into any office visits anywhere. And even on the second day of this girl, she's asking me what my medical group was. And I thought I was a responsible adult. I thought I had insurance that was enough. I didn't know what a medical group was. And I had gotten an email a while ago that my medical group had changed from St. Joseph to St. Jude. I wasn't raised Catholic. I just thought the saints were cool with each other. <laughs> I didn't know that meant my cute little Jewish doctor wouldn't see me anymore. So I had to go through the, the worst part of the pandemic without being able to see a doctor and to find a new one, I had to do all those Zoom meetings. I don't know how you guys feel about the medical professionals out there, but there's one thing they can't do and that is work technology. <laughs> Every old doctor was getting into Zoom meetings at the wrong time. They'd have like a filter on it that didn't make sense. Finally got this one younger doctor and it was great. Uh, he connected right away. And he's going through all my charts with me and he, he gets to the one where he's looking at it and he breaks character. It's an old emergency room video. He's reading this. He's like, <laughs> dude, I remember you. <laughs> Which as a bystander, I'm going to let you know, is something you never want to hear a medical professional say to you through your own fucking computer screen. <laughs> and it took me a second and I remembered him as well. It's been 12 years since this happened now. Uh, I was on a first date with a lady. Met up, things were going well. Again, Chili's appetizers, right? <laughs> appetizers, having a good time. Had some drinks. Got back to my place, and it was getting hot and heavy. It was going down. Conversations, condoms, consent, other things to say to a microphone so these girls don't try to cancel me later. <laughs> I'm going to say by the age of 30, you need to have a working memo in your head but the sexual positions, you're allowed to request for your age group. I'm 40. I know I can request now. I can request missionary. If you don't mind me sweating on top of you like a tropical rainforest. If you want to do doggy longer than 10 minutes, as long as you had a banana, I can make that happen. And then depending on what I had to eat today, you can get on top. That's my level of romance. I'm clocking in like a union worker, and that's all I'm doing. All right? I'm there. This girl wanted to do a glorious message and called reverse cowgirl. If you're not familiar with this, that's when the lady mounts you. She turns around, and for five minutes, you're pretending you're not trying to seek her finger in her butthole. <laughs> and it was, it was great. We were having a good time. But she started getting, like, really aggressive with her lunging. Like, I don't know if she had too many cocktails or she had skipped leg day, but it was getting to the point where it seemed rude. Because from my vantage point, it looked like she 
was trying to have sex with the dick that she wish I had. <laughs> like some sort of vaginal muscle memory of a glorious ex-boyfriend. The ghost of dick past. I don't know what she was going for. She starts taking the eights and nines. I'm like, I didn't promise a nine. What's going on? Here's the thing. I do promise a fat boy seven. <laughs> if you're not familiar, that's when I give you five up front. You just got to push back to get the extra two. <laughs> Oprah said it's there. You go get them, girls. She's taking these lunges to where I got to hold on to her haunches and I'm trying to keep lined up because it feels great. But at the same time, I don't want my meat torpedo to find her exhaust port because you know how that ends poorly. So I'm trying to keep it swinging. And I don't know if it was her arms that gave, my arms that gave out or her legs that gave out. What ended up happening, she fell back into me with all her weight. And if she had just come straight back, that's fine. Every guy who's taking a boner, we try to hide it in our waistband before. We know it works that way. The problem is as she was coming back, her thigh caught it and took it sideways with her. And three things happened immediately. <laughs> I felt a pop. I then heard what sounded like two women screaming hysterically. It was only me. <laughs> And then I smelled a very distinct smell. And they say sometimes during childbirth, sometimes at the end of our life, and it turns out when you get your dick broken, you shit out just a little bit. <laughs> Sitting there in pain. I got a little poopy problem. I'm embarrassed. So I'm trying to confuse her by like yelling over the smell. <laughs> like, I heard it hurts. Go get eyes. I need eyes. Like trying to confuse her. She runs out. I clean myself up. I have never seen those sheets and this pair of boxers again in my life. They are gone in the trash the next day. But she comes running back in with like two ice cubes in her hand. And that's when I got a little like, really, that's, that's, this is, that's what you're going to give this? She goes, what are you talking about? I'm like, take a look, sweetheart. Like, now, when she had left the room, it was just kind of swelling. I had like a pudgy peener situation going on. But the time she got back in, swollen up so bad. It looked like I had like a fanny pack dick like hanging there. Like it had turned colors God never intended. Like a, like a Neapolitan guy fupa, just, just all painful. She saw it, she freaks out, she runs, gets all my eyes, puts it into a towel, gets me hunched over, takes me down to her car, opens up her passenger door, but before she lets me in, she puts in a bunch of paper, <laughs> newspaper, like I've been a bad puppy, just. <laughs> Slams me in her car. She rushes me to the emergency room. Runs in, gets two big orderlies that come out in a wheelchair. They get me. They push me in. And as soon as those double doors open, she threw up deuces and I've never seen her since. <laughs> and I can't blame her. You break a dude's dick on a first date, you're really not doing appetizers on a second one. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but here I am, 12 years later, looking through my computer screen at that doctor to help me in the ER that night. <laughs> He's the one that gave me the shot that took the pain away. He's the one that kind of helped straighten everything out. And I'm proud to say he's my new primary care physician. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 you keep, a doctor keeps a singer like that for 10 years. You can trust that guy. Guys, that's my time tonight. My name is Matt Cole, everybody. Thank you for coming out for this. Thank you so much, guys! Thank you so much!